Thanks, Krista, for the super awesome introduction. Um, I'm Björn. I'm super, super pumped to talk to you all guys here on the Nomad Cruise about my favorite topic business-wise, which is sales. <laughs> They're laughing. I'm, yeah. Um, as Krista just said, I did a couple of companies in the last years. And since my dad just turned 75 and we have a family business running at home, it was the question that somebody had to take over. And so I did that. I run also a second company, which, as Krista just said, is a lead generation um, platform. So we basically do online marketing in a certain niche of construction work. People come to us and we bring them together with the right fitting company, which can solve their problem. Um, what I want to do today is with you guys, like the topic is remote B2B sales and how to get, how to get clients without spending a single dollar. Sales is the overall topic and for all of you who did sales in the past, doing sales at the moment, it's like a huge topic, all right? So of course we cannot cover all, but what, what I want to do is today that out of my six years of sales experience in the companies plus coaching so many startups in terms of sales, I want to dense it down to the Mm, to the best things I found out what helped startups to really grow or like decisions they made bad and like got bloody noses. So I want to kind of help to prevent you to not do the same mistakes. And of course, like here are so many different cool people today and you have different skill levels. I also want to do a quick hands up. So first of your, first of all, who is has no sales experience at all. All right, who has like medium, little sales experience? Fuck that, Fuck that? what? Fuck that. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, take a, just take a guess, like medium, like you have first experiences in sales. All right, and who defines him or herself as a pro? Okay, you guys can come to the front and do it together with me. <laughs> um, no, I, I kind of knew that there will be like different skill levels. So what I tried for this talk today is to come up with different things. So Bori said it yesterday in the introduction. It would be awesome if you if you leave the room or like a talk comes to an end that everybody takes at least one thing out of it. And this is what I try to do here today, that with every skill level, which is here today, that every person of you with, doesn't matter which skill level, can leave this room today with one uh, takeaway. The first, first of all, who knows that guy? Who is it, Tarek? Exactly, for those people who don't know him, he is a self-made billionaire from the US. He owns uh, the basketball team, the Mavericks. He's also on the Shark Tank, um, which is a, yeah, maybe the most successful um, startup show on the television in the US. He comes up with this thing, uh, with the quote, which says, sales cures all. I think that's a really, really powerful quote. Michael, for example, said it yesterday in his talk. Back then when he started up, he was not so good with handling money. And I've seen this really uh, with my own startup. Uh, in the first startup, I got uh, 50,000 funding straight away, first day from my professors from my university. And wow, if you have money, you make a lot of mistakes. You spend it on stuff which is like not really bringing your business forward. But this doesn't matter if you make enough sales, right? So it doesn't matter which mistake you do, if you do enough sales, again, it doesn't really matter. So this is one key takeaway I wanna like give you at hand and this is also like the main headline for this talk today. My little agenda, because I'm talking about different things, I try to cluster it a little for you guys so you can keep track where we are a little. 
First is plan, second, execute, third, analyze. Let's start with the first, plan or think. It's a good thing to think first of what you're going to do, because like strategy-wise, it's of course not smart to just keep running and sprinting in the end you find out shit that was the wrong way. So let's start thinking first. And especially for all of you who are starting sales, this is your homework, okay? In the end, I don't know, the, uh, the presentations, are they gonna be sent out anyway? I don't know, at the end there, uh, of the presentation, there is my email address, take a picture, send me an email, I'm gonna send you the presentation, especially for the homework here. This is the stuff you all have to know, like if I wake you up in the, uh, at night, or your girlfriend or your boyfriend uh, wakes you up at night saying, what's your benefits, what's your USP, what's your target group, what's your business in one sentence, this is what you have to have straight in every single moment of your life as an entrepreneur, right? Benefits. Of course, you need to know what your major benefit is, right? Otherwise, you will never sell. Second thing is USPs. For all of you who don't know, it's the unique selling proposition. So if you know your competitors, for example, you need to know what makes your business stick out of everybody else. You need to know for how much money are they paying their services or products. So you know how to put yourself in context if you want to be higher price, lower price or whatever. So this is all the things you really, really have to know. And if you're really done with that, then you can keep going with everything else. Which is knowing your actual or future customers or clients. Of course, everybody, I, me, myself, especially with my first business, thought, okay, I'm gonna market every retail business in Germany, right? So I know, okay, it was retail. Second thing, was like which companies I want to market, third is which uh, department I want to market. It was the marketing department. So what we did back then is we made a really cool PowerPoint presentation and send it out to the secretary of the marketing department saying, hey look guys, we have this kick-ass idea, it's the best thing you will find in this area, can you please forward that to the right person, like who is in charge of that. And who can guess how many sales we made with that? Zero, exactly. The point is, you have to find out who that one person is you're selling to, right? The number one person, because first of all, everybody is so busy, if you send it to the secretary and then they get a random email, they will most likely not open it, and if they open it, they most likely have no time anyway to really check out what's in there. Second thing is, and I think this is even the bigger thing, people mostly in corporate companies don't work for the company. They work for themselves. They want to get promoted. They want to be the coolest person in the department. So if you find out what is the benefit for that exactly person you want to sell to, then you're on the right way. So really, really, that's a, one of the biggest things I had to learn in like a couple of months, maybe half a year of my first business. Next big thing, you have to start selling yourself. I coached a couple of businesses, especially with techies and also um, engineers, which made so cool products. And then they were like, yeah, yeah, I, but I'm the, I'm the tech guy, I'm the producer of this thing, and now I'm looking forward to somebody who is going to sell it. I can tell you again, this is not working. The number one person is you as the founder of the company. You have that intrinsic motivation to really get things going. And if you make a mistake or if you make a mistake or go through a valley where it's not nothing is working you are the only one who will bring up the power to really keep going until it really works 
And if you have figured it out, how it really works, then you can give it to somebody else. Because then you are, then you know how it works and just then you can explain somebody how to do it in detail. I like that one, motivation. Because in sales, I guess, especially in the beginning, it's all about motivation. Like you have to overcome fear, anxiety, fuck anxiety, right, Michael? Um, you have to overcome this fear of really get going. And for me, I think I read it in the book. I really like that one because if you figure out how much, what, like what your price is and how you're going to earn with each client. And as a second thing, you figure out how many contacts you have to do to make one sales. Then you can make an easy equation. For example, you make 1000 bucks with every client and you need to do 20 calls. You can say, wow, for every call I'm making 50 bucks. So every time you get out your phone, and you get rejected because they, I don't know, don't want you, don't like you, or they have just other things to do, you hang up and say, yes, I made 50 bucks. And then you say like, oh, cool, I want to do another 50 bucks. So you get out your phone and you do the next step, right? And eventually, after the 20s call, you really made a next contract and you got a new client, which of course even motivates you more. So that was... A couple of things of the thinking part. Next part, execution. Oh yeah, that's a cool one. Start as early as possible. I'm also referring again to my first startup. We thought we have the best idea in the world. I already told you that, right? Uh, what we did is we built a product which we thought is gonna rock. So we built it for like a year and then we tried to market it and nobody wanted to buy it. Bad luck, right? Or we could have thought back then we should have started selling earlier. Or you don't have to actually sell, like talk to your clients, make a questionnaire, make interviews, which could be like the soft selling part, right? You could show them your MVP, your minimal viable product, or just some slides, how your product should look like in the end. And then ask them, hey, would you buy money? Would you pay money for that? Would you buy my product or my service? I know this is not the, like, it's just real if they really signed the contract or really paid. But at least you know you're not running in a completely wrong direction. Because this is what we did. And this was one year of just nonsense work. Oh, I have to go back because there's another cool thing. I met an agency. They are selling before even making the product. It's a software agency. They build tech products. And what they do is really go out and sell things because, before they even have it. So they get like 10 clients and then they say, okay, now we're going to start and write the first line of code. Of course, that's a little much. But just to give you an idea what could be the way. Plan your funnel. We heard it before a little. Um, that's a really important thing because, of course, you don't go out there, call people, and they instantly sign, right? We're all humans. We all need time to figure things out. We are busy with stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have to think, how are your clients thinking? And then break your sales process down into small steps. For example, first phone call. They don't know you, right? But we come, we're going to talk about this a little later. It's the first telephone call. Then you send a follow-up email, like summarize what you just talked about. Make a Skype demo. Get to know, get, like, get to know the people a little better. Let them get to know you a little bit better. Do again, follow up email, summarize, do the final call, sending the contract. It's a little generic, I know, but I just want to point out, really break down your sales process into like really small steps that you really, like really think about how your, how your future clients think and what they need in terms of that they really sign your contract in the end. Okay, this is a little bit hard to read, but this is 
my CRM system, we heard it before as well, if you build your funnel, it's really cool to use a CRM system because this is my life system at the moment and you see every, every line is another prospect I'm targeting at the moment. So if you have um, 10, 20, 30 prospects at a time which you're targeting, of course you forget uh, after a week not talking what you talked about. What is the next step? What do I want to do? Like, what did I agree on with that person in the last in the last telephone call, for example? And in that CRM, it's called Pipe Drive. This is my favorite CRM, and I would highly recommend uh, this for all of you guys. Everything I talk about is for free, actually, because this is uh, how to get clients without spending a single dollar. This costs money. This is, I think, 12 bucks a month, and it's totally worth it. So you can really write everything down neatly and you know when, like it reminds you when you have the next call, etc., etc. So it's really, really um, a benefit for me in doing sales. If you get out today with just one learning, this is it. The most important thing in terms of sales is especially in the beginning, how to get this one minute of freaking full attention. Because everybody, like you pick up the telephone, call, uh, the telephone and call people and they're listening to you for one minute. So you have that one minute thing, yes. But you really want full attention because if they really are with their mind open what you have to say now, just then they will think about it, then they might accept what you have to say, right? So I have two approaches for you here today. One is the direct approach and one is the indirect approach. What does that mean? Direct approach, you all know it, many of you hate it, it's called calling. But it is as it is, it's the easiest way to get clients, especially if, if the target person is easy to approach. The second is the indirect approach for those people who A, have target clients who are not easy to approach. And secondly, for all of you who don't want to do sale, uh, cold calls because you don't like it or whatever, it's a pretty cool way, um, for, especially for the people who have fear of rejection, which I totally can understand because I'm doing sales for a couple of years now and every time I'm doing a new business model, I'm still afraid of doing the first calls. So this is another cool way of doing sales. As I said, it's all about cold calling for this slide because I can tell you it's so efficient. It's actually super, super easy for my business at the moment. I have, um, I do three calls and I get one new client. And um, I'm going to show you now how I exactly do it. I'm not talking more than four, four to five sentences. I'm, the first call is not more than two minutes. I give myself a little credibility so he or she doesn't think, oh, what a newbie is calling me there. And in the end, I ask just one question. And of course, this question has to be yes. This is the most important thing. So what I say is, hello, for example, Mr. Meyer. My name is Björn Freimuth from company XYZ. I just have one quick question for you. This is my opening because then they're like, Oh, whew, Gott, sei, uh, Gott sei Dank, wollte ich gerade sagen. Uh, what is the word in English? Like, oh, like they're happy, whatever. They're happy. This guy who is just calling me is not going to talk to me for 10, 15 minutes and like blah, blah, blah about my cool product. It's just one question, right? Of course, after that, I explain a little more. For example, for a while now, we are generating leads for other companies in the area XYZ. So this is what we're doing, right? And also I gave myself a little credibility because I said we're doing this for a while already. Next one, at the moment we have many leads, that's what we're selling, right? In your area as well. So I would like to know if you are fully booked in the next months or if you have free capacities. I thought about this question really for a while because this is of course a rhetorical question, right? I'm basically asking them, hey, do you want more money? Of course, they want more money, right? So that's it. If they say no, then I say, hey, cool. I sent you an email anyway. If you ever want to work with me, 
totally fine. I'm happy here if you are ready to do that. And if they say no, then they just said no. So there is actually no, there is actually nothing to be afraid of, right? So this is how I do it. Maybe you can take something out of it. Of course, it's for my business, right? So you need to think about a little how to adapt it to your business. But I really, really hope you get something out of it. But what if my prospect is not easy to approach? What if I hate cold calling? I know many people really, really don't like it. I came up with this thing. Mm, it might be that some people of you know it already. Especially on this, I gave uh, a couple of workshops and sometimes people know it. But if you do not know, it's a really, really cool way. I worked with this for a couple of years with a software product. And it's really, really nice. So what I do is, where's the pointer? Here is the target person I want to address, right? So, but what I do is, I don't contact this target person directly. I contact the boss. And I do it on LinkedIn. So I send a, oh, I see some nodding heads. Uh, I send a friend request to the boss saying, hey boss, this is our offer. Is it generally interesting for you? I've seen Mr. Maya is in charge of that. Is that correct? So if the boss thinks, yeah, that sounds interesting, and he just have to answer me with yes, you get a freaking high acceptance rate for sales, which is for me 33.3% 33 with this um, software. And what I do then is, as a second step, I contact the target saying, hey, whatever, I just talked to your boss about this and that. He says you are in charge and he thinks it's interesting. So when are you free to talk? And the acceptance rate of this is over 75%. And because they think, or what I really did is talking to the boss before, they give me this one minute of full attention. And of course, then if you get this one minute of full attention, then it's up to you. But I guess you're all fucking amazing people with cool products. Then it should be really to sell the rest of the product. Analyzation brings me to the last point of today. Again, CRM. The, your numbers are so 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 important and if you use a crm system for example pipe drive and you really write down everything neatly you just press one button and you have all the numbers on one glance and please do that regularly i do it minimum weekly but really do it minimum every month i mean maybe you have to do it anyway for the tax but just for you to really increase your business, you have to have your numbers straight, right? And um, yeah, it's not really important what's here in detail, but especially Pipedrive gives you a really, really cool overview. And this brings me to the last slide. That's me, that's my email address, my telephone number, and my Skype contact details. If you want, you can take a picture, send me an email. If you have questions, talk to me on the cruise, or right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>